All right, so this time I have went down the rabbit hole quite deep. And it's, uh, let's just say, So now, what do I mean by the rabbit hole? Well, <laughs> every project has a way, well, not every project, some people actually plan pretty well. I, on the other hand, am not the greatest planner, I guess, because, okay, I'm pretty good. But, <laughs> with this van, all I wanna do, the 66 Ford Econo line, is make it a daily driver. Now, originally I tried to keep it original and I wanted to not cut out the dash. But let's be honest, this vehicle's 50 years old or better. Well, well over 50 years. Well, yeah. Okay, anyways, <laughs> my math's a little off on that one. But so all I wanted to do was make it a daily driver. Now, I know that seems like it might be a little hard, but ultimately people drove these things daily for work. I mean, people used them in and out. They're in California, they're in Washington. Some of them were shipped, some of them were just driven out there. Anyways, back to what I'm talking about, the rabbit hole. It goes kind of like this. I was trying to drive it across town to pick up my grandson at school, and it tried to overheat. Changed the water pump, didn't really help it. Changed the radiator, didn't really help it. Now this is all stuff I did way before. So since then I put an electric fan on it. I put an aluminum radiator. I replaced the hoses, uh, changed the water pump. The thermostat was replaced with a 160 because that's as low as they'll go without not being there. I burped it. I've done everything I can think of. And so anyway, she still gets hot. She still gets a little uncomfortable. I mean, you can't touch the doghouse, which is normal. But the more I look at it, I'm like, Ford really didn't design this very well. I mean, they designed it like a box. It's a box tucked up in the middle of this van. Not necessarily in the middle, but pretty much towards the front. And then I seen all the posts, because then you go Google it, you know, going down the rabbit hole. Why am I getting hot? Why is it getting hot? So I Google it. Why is 1966 Ford Econo line with a 240 getting warm? And of course, everything you see is, well, do you have a belly pan? I have a belly pan, check. Uh, have you flushed the radiator? Check. Have you replaced the radiator? Check. Are you running a better fan? Check. Um, all these different things come about. Have you created a heat shield? Check. Uh, but anyways, with that being said, I finally, Finally got to the point, I was like, okay, we gotta make a decision on what we wanna do with this thing. So, long story short there, I'm driving it down the road and it starts slipping. The transmission starts slipping. And I'm like, oh. So we got a guy named Steve's Transmission here in Morristown, Tennessee. Phenomenal, phenomenal guy. Take it to him, he, puts a, he, he takes the transmission out, he buys a kit because he asked me, of course, is it original? Well, as far as I know, I think it's original. <laughs> Long story short, he buys the kit for a 66. Come to find out, it doesn't fit. He doesn't have the right valve bodies and all that for the tranny. He ends up getting one for a 1970s, early 70s. And I'm like, huh, interesting. But I don't think anything about it. Maybe somebody changed the transmission. Still a 300 or a 240 in this thing. Maybe somebody's just changed the transmission. So. I'm driving it again, and it gets a little warm. Summer's now coming on, so I can't rely on, you know, the cool winter to help kind of keep it cool. So I say, I've had enough. I'm going to go ahead and modify the doghouse. And so in doing it, I cut out the whole front of the doghouse. I cut it out. I made a piece, and I'm working on that video right now. I've got all the video for it. But I, I cut it out. I made a piece. Then I, cut, I go to cut the floor because I want fresh air coming to my radiator, which I do now. You can actually see it. Then I find that I got a bracket that goes across in the middle of where I'm cutting out the floor, which I didn't want to cut out the whole floor anyways. I just wanted to cut up enough to be able to let my air flow through. That worked. I took it around the block, 
and I was like, well, let me drive it a little bit and see. My temperature gauge never got too warm, so I get a little cocky. <laughs> I drive it a little further. I drive it a little further. Then I'm getting stuck at red lights, and don't get me wrong, my temperature gauge never raised up. I stayed in the, the 180 range, which was fine. I'm happy with that, right? However, I go to take off from the red light, and what happens? It acts like it's running out of gas. Well, I know it's not vapor lock because I've already chased that down by putting, <laughs> by redoing it, by putting the, uh, the fuel cell inside of it and keeping the fuel. I don't fuel, it did not, it does not vapor lock. That's not the problem. But the problem is, is the exhaust and the carburetor, I think, is actually getting so hot because you couldn't even touch the carburetor. I popped the doghouse, went to touch the carburetor. You can't even touch the carburetor. And I'm pretty sure the fuel, as soon as it, as soon as it gets that hot, it's got to be vaporizing. The engine's just not getting it. <laughs> and so I'm sputtering all the way to the house. I finally had to stop, let it cool down enough that I could get it started again and then come on home. All right, so now I'm aggravated and I'm looking it up again. And somebody, came, somebody said, well, maybe the, the riser valve, the heat riser valve in the manifold's bad. So, okay, so now I've cut the front out of my doghouse. I have basically changed all these components. And then I go, I go and I take off the other side of my doghouse. And I get in there and I look at it and I go, okay, I'm going to take the exhaust off. Thank God somebody put anti-seize whenever they did it. <laughs> everything came off smooth. I mean, the whole intake, everything came off. Then I took the valve, or I took the exhaust and the intake apart. And I took a hammer and I tried to figure out why it wasn't working correctly. And I finally got frustrated and I beat it out of it. I beat the riser valve out of it. I don't need it. I'm in East Tennessee. I've already plenty of heat coming up from that, that exhaust. I don't need it to work that well. <laughs> so long story short there, I end up putting putty in it to fill up a little bit of the gap to make it to where it's filled up. And then I created a heat shield and I wrapped it in a heat temp uh, shield because you can't put that directly on the exhaust. Uh, I was going to wrap the exhaust because I didn't know any better and see the rabbit hole it just keeps going deeper and deeper. But anyways, long story there, or the answer to that is you can't wrap cast iron. Cast iron will continue to get too hot. If it's wrapped, it bakes the heat in, it will crack. I don't want to do that. I don't want to crack the exhaust. Eventually I will get headers for this thing and get rid of that. But anyways, so I take all that off, I beat out the riser valve, I seal it up, I make a heat shield, and then I'm reading on there and somebody's going, well, if you're having trouble with the carburetor, go fuel injection. I love the idea, don't get me wrong, I love the idea of fuel injection. But if I'm the sniper holly unit, or holly sniper unit, the one barrel, which I don't care about a one barrel, it doesn't matter to me, two barrel, one barrel, four barrel, whatever, as long as it runs. <laughs> But the biggest thing about that is the ECU is bolted to the front of it. I'm already getting too hot that it's vaporizing gas. Do I really want a computer component sitting on top of that? I've got to sort out the heat issues before that. Now there's a couple other companies and I can relocate the ECU on the outside. I'm still not happy with that. So anyways, it's the bail lady. Okay, back to my story. So now I'm in the groove. I've got the front design to cut off. And now I've got the exhaust off, I've got the intake off, I've got the valve beat out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm good to go. I go down to get a gasket and they have to order it. One of the most common Ford engines in the United States and they have to go and order a gasket, an intake exhaust gasket for me. Now that's impressive. <laughs> and it wasn't like just one auto store, I called like two or three that I have here in town and nobody had it. And it was a Memorial Day, so some other places were closed. All right. So I'm down that rabbit hole. And so I'm waiting on the gasket. So I'm like, okay, I'll just stop now and leave it be. <laughs> Next day I go to pick up the gasket. It wasn't in. So it takes me another day I go to get it. And I've got the gasket, I get the gasket, I come back. And I start bolting everything back up and getting it all right and getting everything in place. And then I'm like, I get it running again and I can hear a little mist to it, which I've always heard. 
But now I'm going down the other rabbit hole. I'm like, well, I've already got this side of the doghouse tore off. Let me tune it up while I'm at it. So I'm like, I'm just gonna pull the plugs, the wires, you know, distributor cap, all that stuff. So I go around the other side and I can't quite get in there because some other garbage that's in there. So I pull that side of the doghouse. The only part of the doghouse left right now is the back half, which I should just pull it for, for shits and giggles at this point. <laughs> Anyways, pull that out, pop the cap. I did not realize, <laughs> and I should have, this engine is running with points. I don't want to fool with points. <laughs> I've done it too many times, a single set of points in this thing. Okay, well, how are we gonna deal with that? Well, we Google some more stuff. Now you see where I'm at on this rabbit hole. All I wanted to do was just make it run a little cooler. <laughs> ah, the story just keeps going. Now, so I bought, I went online and I looked at different distributors and different setups. I don't want to deal with Ford's ignition box and all that. So at this point, I'm like, I need to figure out what engine I have in this thing now anyways, and just double check everything and make sure I'm correct. So I, I pull the numbers off right below the intake, I Google it, and it's a 1972 240. <laughs> at that point, I'm just like, you know what? I really don't care. I just want it to run efficiently. And I don't have to keep it original at all now because that has released me from it. It's not the original engine. I'm good with it. So I buy a distributor. I buy an HEI distributor because then I can get away from the ugliness of the Ford ignition box. I hate that. I don't want to put anything else in there. All right. I put it on order. I come back out. I do a little bit more checking. And then I notice that when I put the electric fuel pump on this thing, all I did, and this is kind of lazy of me, was to get it running, I just crimped the lines on the mechanical fuel pump because I was thinking it was getting too hot and vapor locking there. <laughs> so I pulled the fuel pump off because now I'm, I'm in there. I need to go ahead and put a block off plate. So I start looking for a simple block off plate. I'm like, well, let me go order one. Well, nobody has them at AutoZone. Nobody has them at Advance. They try to sell me, uh, you know, the big one, and I only need the one to cover it up. And I'm like, all right, now I'm frustrated. <laughs> so I am so far down this rabbit hole <laughs> that I, you know, I've just got to keep pushing through. Now I'm waiting on parts. As soon as I get parts in, then I'll be able to start working on some stuff again. Anyways, welcome to the rabbit, rabbit hole, <laughs> going down the rabbit hole video. And uh, yeah, watch me and I'll put it all back together again. All I can say is, that's impressive. Talk to you later.